Hello everyone, my name is Shafi Jam. So today I'm going to share the result uh, in the ECR project establishing sustainable solutions to cassava disease in mainland Southeast Asia. So here we will mainly focus on objective objective two about breeding and selection. So uh, all these results is mainly from uh, the breeding team in Southeast Asia, led by Dewey. We also have two other team members, Feng and uh, Chang. Um, and also I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about some results uh, uh, from uh, from pa from partners like uh, AGI and uh, Hanlock in Vietnam. So next, uh, before I jump into the result, I'd like to give you some uh, overview about the Seattle Cassava breeding program. So um, for cassava, globally, there are about four, four major products. So that's uh, cassava for uh, starch and cassava for human consumption with uh, high beta carotene, and that's called by fortified cassava. And um, also, and also we have a product for human consumption. We call it a boiled cassava, and there is a uh, cassava for specialty starch, the, about waxy cassava and small granule starch. And the the other one is um, cassava for processing foods. Um, it's mainly in West Africa. It's granulated and for paste uh, food product. So let's see that we mainly focus on the first four cassava product, and our target. Uh, environment is subhumid and semi-arid lowland tropics um, is in in Colombia. So that's um, um, this um, target environment and also the same in Southeast Asia. That's because this environment is um, a, a account for about more than 50 percent of the global cassava production. So our, all our yield trials are in this target environment. So in Colombia, we have uh, usually we have more than three locations, and in uh, Vietnam, we also have more than uh, usually have three locations. So in total, every year we have about forty hectares trial for breeding population and evaluate. Um, another another important part is at Seattle, we have the largest gene bank, more than uh, six thousand five hundred accessions maintained in the in the gene bank. From the gene bank, we identified. Uh, um, the traits like uh, high beta carotene, resistance to white fly, resistance to CBSD, and um, now we are we are searching for the resistance for witch broom, and also the resistance for root rot. So hope this uh, um, we strongly believe. Um, so the gene bank material will provide uh, the traits required in the catalog in cassava production in different region. And the Seattle cassava, cassava program have more than 50 years breeding history. So in the past 50 years, we developed this um, breeding network. So um, so Seattle cassava program located in Colombia, in South America, and but uh, we have um, collaboration to deliver trade donors and bring the population to Africa, to Asia. So in Latin America, we mainly uh, kind of focus on the three product uh, is um, uh, again cassava for starch by fortified cassava and uh, boiled cassava, and we share trade donor and um, improved publishing with Africa is mainly IATA and several major national programs. Um, so that's mainly um, the three product uh, cassava for starch by fortified cassava and boiled cassava. So in Southeast Asia, I think the major focus is cassava for starch. And uh, uh, we are start we are starting to develop the product uh, cassava for human consumption that mainly um, in example in Indonesia, in Philippines. So um, the CMD was reported in Southeast Asia in 2015 and start from there, uh, Seattle had been working with more than 20 um, organizations trying to develop a um, project to uh, provide solutions to this um, 
uh, pandemic, um, CBS, uh, CMD, uh, is Casamo that disease. Um, so here for breeding, we mainly focus on capacity building and collaborations with national programs. We try to identify and uh, identify the best um, the best material can be released to deal with Casamo that disease, and also try to incorporate uh, the new. Uh, the the known CMD resistance loci or locus into the elint um, varieties in Southeast Asia. So it's mainly try to introduce um, introduce CMD resistant material and uh, to develop improve the variety with CMD resistance. So. Um, before again, I want to like to um, provide some background about breeding. I know a lot of people I don't have experience, don't have the background in breeding. So I will. I'm happy to. I'm. I like to start with uh, the definition about plant breeding. So I like this definition: is plant breeding is the genetic improvement of plants for human benefit. So from this definition, we can, um, we can. Identify the four major components in plant breeding. That's um, those are germplasm, product, and uh, breeding team or team, and the tools. So we can uh, we can uh, modify the definition like this. Plant breeding is a, a group of people. So that's team. Including the breeding team and uh, multidisciplinary teams, using different tools to genetically improve germplasm to meet to product which meet the needs the uh, the needs of humans. So that's main human benefit. So in the next several slides, I will be mainly um, talk about uh, our activities focus on these four major uh, major elements in breeding germplasm product team and tools okay so first look at the product so we work with uh, the national program especially Hanlog and uh, key um, Thailand breeding breeding program in, in TTDI in KU we defined the we, de we determined the product profile for Southeast Asia is made for starch is high and stable um, dramatic cassava for Southeast Asia. So our our focus uh, environment is subhuman and um, subhuman lowland and uh, semi arid lowland area. So we um, identify the traits we are going to select. We are going to evaluate the breeding population, and for all these traits, we have the unique ontology which can manage the data we collect for these traits in Casal base. So it's a database developed in the next project, uh, but we are fully using this, uh, this database to manage the breeding data. And for each sheet, we have uh, the skill defined and uh, we um, determined the minimum score, the threshold. And for, for some trees, we defined it them as essential trees, some are nice to have trees. And then here we we define that the trees we need to improve, for example, fresh yield. And um, some trees we define as thresh, thresh, threshold trees, like uh, the starch content, it must have, must be higher than 25%. So for Jamplanzum, I like to highlight uh, the elite varieties in Southeast Asia. So um, so Southeast Asia, we have um, we work with national program have pretty dramatic um, achievements. So here we compare um, the major consumption production in each region: Brazil in Latin America and Nigeria in Africa, and Thailand in Southeast uh, Asia. So um, com we always we always so this this data is um, from uh, FAO. So that's uh, the country mean of the cassava yield per hectare. So we can see um, in general in um, Latin America and also in Africa, the cassava yield does not improve much, but in 
Associates Asia because of the new um, variety release and also the improved agronomy, agronomy like uh, fertilizer use, irrigation use. So all, the, all this together is contributed to dramatic yield increase uh, in Southeast Asia. And also, so since there is um, um, advanced or elite variety, so in, in our, yeah, so this elite variety can be used uh, as the baseline for treat integration to integrate uh, the CMD resistance in these um, in these um, elite varieties. So all these all these varieties are in the crossing nursery now. We are we are going to uh, use them for new variety development. And for CMD resistant material, so uh, in the past. Uh, for five years, we have been introduced uh, um, the new resource, the um, different source of publication to Southeast Asia. So first, we introduced a publication from uh, Asia, from uh, SEAT and uh, ITA, and later we introduced uh, a publication from Hawaii, which um, are the seeds uh, derived from the material from SEAT and Africa. Um, so there will be um, a lot of a lot of um, seeds should have the CMD resistant genes, and uh, we also introduced material from uh, uh, Dr. Steve Winter's lab in Germany. So especially, um, I want to mention the dual resistant material to CMD and CBSD, Castle Brown Street disease. So here is um, about uh, the detailed information. So we introduced um, about 102 uh, CMD resistant uh, clones. That's from a genetic study, um, try to understand uh, the genetic of CMD resistance. And also now we introduced uh, five uh, advanced breeding material from ITA. And again, from Hawaii, um, that's uh, the seeds um, derived from the um, parents from um, Asia, from uh, SEAT and from ITA. So we introduced the seeds to three countries in Laos, in Vietnam and Thailand. So here later I'm going to report the progress in Vietnam. Um, and uh, again, from Germany, Dr. Steve Winston's lab, we introduced the dual resistance material. So this, this serves two purposes. So one is preemptive breeding for Associated Asia, and also we try to integrate CMD, CBSD um, material to a uh, hydrometer um, elite background. So this material can also contribute to, to the Kasawa breeding and production in Africa. So for teams at SEAT, we have a multidisciplinary team. So we have uh, the breeding team, agronomy, plant physi physiologist, plant pathologist, and scientist on seed system. So this mainly focus on farmers need and processors needs. And we have uh, angro -econ uh, and work with NARS. This is mainly focus on to understand the market, right? So, and besides the multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary team at SEED, we also have the CGIR NARS net breeding network in Southeast Asia. So the breed, major breeding activity uh, we support is mainly happened in Vietnam. So uh, it's mainly work with two organizations, AGA and uh, Hanlock Agricultural Research Center. And uh, there is also strong breeding activity in Thailand and also in China. And in Laos and in Cambodia, NAFRI and the JDA, they mainly kind of introduce the material and uh, do evaluation and then release to farmers. So we, for to for uh, work with national pro national um, program, we have done the capacity building. So um, we do it in in kind of in two ways. One is we have we have uh, workshops um, to introduce the new breeding, um, standardize the breeding scheme, and introduce new breeding technology. And also, uh, we we use another another way is training by doing. So we have breeding activities in. Uh, Vietnam and work closely with national programs. So the national program will 
observe how we manage trial, how we design trial, how we collect data, how we analyze the data. Then during this process, we can increase the capacity of the national programs in cassava breeding. Um, so the next I uh, so um, now I covered the germplasm. So we um, use the alien germplasm in Southeast Asia. We introduce CMD resistant material, and I covered uh, the per we defined the product profile, and also we have a multidisciplinary team at SEAT. We work closely with national program. Um, so this is about the 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 team we work together. Um, to um, develop new varieties. So the next I want to talk about the tools. So before talk about the specific tools. So here I want to um, want to uh, um, provide again some background about breeding. So the breeding there uh, is it's it's a process. So this process is mainly include three stages. So first we may cross. We create a variation. We create a, a segregation population. And then we put the publishing in the field. We do evaluation, collect the data, analyze the data, and then select making selections. And uh, the selection uh, can be we select the best material to go to the release process, and we also can select the best to come back to the cross industry to make new crosses, and then just uh, start this cycle again. Okay, so and so here I want to. Uh, yeah, so many, many talk about uh, the the um, activities we have done is integration and variety development. I will start from germplasm integration and evaluation. So in Vietnam, so we work with AGI and Hanlock, so we can access this uh, uh, regional breeding and uh, regional um, yield testing net network. Um, so that then uh, uh, we can have trials in these uh, eight locations. Um, but again, our major focus area is um, um, subhuman and semi-arid semi lowland tropics. And after we, in the early stage, we evaluate the material in this target environment. And then in the uh, late stage, we put the material in more locations to uh, evaluate their their performance and select the adapt uh, variety to different uh, locations. Okay, so uh, first, um, uh, this is mainly about evaluate the introduced germplasm. So here is mainly focus on um, the material we introduced from SIAT and from ITA. So it's basically AGI and Hanlock work closely together. We uh, we um, first introduced them the germplasm. And then we, we evaluate uh, in one location the first year in uh, in tanning in the CMD hotspot, and then we select the, the uh, resistant material and evaluate them again in two locations. And then in 2021, we have uh, regional year, year year trials in six locations, and uh, we select the best material, uh, then put them in the uh, in the release process. So in uh, 2022, we, we uh, based on the result uh, in the past uh, three years, so we released um, the, the national programs, AGA and Hanlock. They released six varieties, three from ITA and three from SEAT. So first, uh, let's look at the, the trials, or we always uh, look at the broad sense variability. So this is about uh, the repeatability within um, trials within each environment. So you can see for CMD, we have pretty high repeatability. And uh, for starch, in general, we have good uh, uh, heritability. And for yield, it's relative, it's, it's moderate, it's moder moderate heritability. I think it's, um, it's so this, this is, is, is in a pretty, in a pretty good range uh, or um, in general, I can I can see the data we have um, good uh, or high quality for decision making, and um, um, in, in, so you can see in different location we have different disease pressure. So here I want to highlight uh, the 2020 in Tainin. So we know Tainin is a hotspot of CMD. 
So in the you can see in the first months after planting, we already saw very severe CMD symptom. So the population score uh, for the checks. So here is the is only I I I show the result of the alient variety which are susceptible to CMD. So for this for this check variety, you can see in the first months the average score can be six or four, and then it's quickly increased to even larger than four. But for the other location, it start with low CMD and then increase to three later. OK, so I think this this high CMD pressure really um, cause some um, um, some low performance for the elite variety or the local varieties. So we always uh, we all when we analyze the data, we always look at the correlation between the different environment. So this is mainly show how stable the the performance of the material in different environment. So here I I showed CMD. So that's in different environment is is high highly cor correlated. So that means the result in different environment are quite similar. And branch 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 number and height of the first branch. These show the plant architecture. It's also we also can see pretty um, pretty good um, correlation between environment. And for starch, is consistent with what we observed. It showed high stable uh, between high is is not is high is consistent in different environment. For yield is um, low her low her low herability, low repeatability. So it's also aligned with what we ob we observed. Uh, especially there are several several locations in Tainin. What I mentioned before, in 2020 in Tainin we have high CMD score. So I think this might be cause uh, the especially for the local varieties the performance is worse than is much worse than the performance in low CMD pressure environment. And uh, also we we find uh, this full year environment is also showed uh, pretty low correlation with um, this environment. OK, so this is something we are going to pay attention on that when we make decision to decide which which material we are going to release for which region. And so here is kind of give you the overview about the performance of the material. Um, so this these are the adjust um, adjust the mean adjust mean of use clones in several K trade CMD plant architecture starch and yield. So we sort these these clones based on the starch yield. You can see K50 is show susceptible to CMD, but in general, in terms of starch yield is still pretty good. And uh, you can see, um, and for the other elite variety also, we can see they're susceptible to CMD. And for all the um, in, in uh, the introduced material, um, material from ITA, TMB4 and I, and the other four clones, it show um, pretty high CMD resistance, or we can mostly is, is we can call it immune to CM Kazamoza disease. And if we look at plant type, we can see most of the clones that not has good plant type and the elite variety. So you can see if you have more red, that means um, the performance is not preferred. And for starch, again, we can see K50 is pretty high, and um, uh, TME4 and I is okay. And but for all the other IT material, we can see the starch content is pretty low. So even they have CMD CMD resistance, but this uh, uh, low starch it might be not meet the farmers' needs. And for yield, you can see this local variety. Local elite variety just because it's mainly because they show severe CMD symptom that cause dramatic yield loss. And for um, CMD resistant variety, there are several clones that showed pretty good good yield. 
and you can see TME, TME 4 and 9. And um, so this is the rank of the starch yield. So it's, it's percentage of starch times with yield. OK, so and if we break out the uh, the or look at the detail of the performance in each environment again so here is cmd resistance uh, you can see this is aligned well with our correlation analysis so is is the result is pretty consistent in different region it's always show resistance and uh, it's always show susceptible of the, uh, the local elite variety and this is start yield so we can see, um, yeah, so um, here, uh, this environment is have severe high CMD pressure. So even K50 not able to hold, hold up well, but in the other environment, its performance is still pretty good. And um, um, so, yeah, TME4, TM, TME4 and I in general in different, different environment is on the top. OK, and the local variety is mainly because of the CMD symptom. The uh, the start the start yield is at the bottom. Okay. And then uh, based on this, this, this performance um, uh, and is CMD resistance, plant architecture, starch content, starch yield. So uh, AGI released the six varieties. So the um, list here. So there are three from ITA, so TME4 and 9, and 5081, 2205, and three from CR, CR24-16, AR9-48, and CR27-20. Okay, so you can uh, you can look at, we, so here we can see their performance. Um, again, I want to mention, so this, um, um, right release decision not on, not make only based on the one one trace is kind of uh, consider the performance of different traits. So and um, um, yeah, here we can we we so I I want to highlight again so um, the starch yield and uh, the starch of this, even they are released, the starch might be not good enough for farmers. So they might need the more fertilizer and better management to maintain um, the starch level. Um, but for TME B4 and I and CR24-16, they have a pretty stable starch that might meet the farmers need better. Um, and after after this evaluation, then we shared the best material with uh, the other countries in the Southeast Asia, that's in Thailand, in Laos, in Cambodia, and uh, now the, this material are in the year trials um, in Laos and uh, and Cambodia and Thailand. So next year we are going to have the result. Then we are going to decide which variety we are going to release in in those countries. So another introduced publication is the material from Hawaii. So first we introduced about 5,000 seeds and then we germinate. And I think the one, one reason is the seeds is kind of old. It's harvested several years ago. So the germination is not very good. So we select, we we have um, 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 a little more than 600 seedlings. And then we make, we make, we select based on the CMD and the CMD markers and plant type. So then what we advanced to 175. And then we select the 17 the best clones and put them um, in the prelim preliminary year trial. And then now the best material in the advanced year, year trial now, uh, we are going to evaluate them again to see their performance and uh, hope there is one or two maybe can be released. So um, this, these are the performance from the preliminary year trial. We harvest uh, this year. So here I showed the germination and the starch content and the yield. So um, here I want to highlight. So this, these are the select the clones we selected. 
I want to highlight, you can see compare this Hawaii material, the starch content. In general, they are a little bit lower than the um, than the local varieties or the commercial checks. So this is something we need to pay attention. Um, and uh, uh, probably we need to spend effort to improve them. So um, and this year we are going to evaluate their dramatic intent again in another another an, in another two environments and to see how the how the starch content look like. And a yield uh, in terms of yield we can see is pretty good to kind of match with the even higher than than the um, commercial variety and uh, some several varieties are even higher than TME four and nine. OK, so this again, so we are evaluating this uh, um, these clones in the field now. So next year we are going to harvest and make make a decision about uh, um, which variety we are going to variety release process. So um, again, so here I'll kind of mainly highlight the introduced uh, gem plantsum. So we introduced material from um, SEAT from ITA and also the material from Hawaii. So the most advanced material is the material introduced from from SEAT and ITA. So six variety release and TME 4 and 9 is showed um, the best performance in start content, start stability and plant architecture and also yield. So um, I think even more than now, there are more than six 6,000 uh, hectares of TME 4 and 9 in Vietnam. So probably this variety also been um, introduced by traders um, in uh, Cambodia, probably. So uh, and after analyze, after evaluate the introduced population, so compare with the commercial checks, we are thinking we are going to still need to improve uh, the starch content, starch stability, plant architecture, and also pest and disease resistance, especially CBB mite resistance and uh, root rot resistant. So the next I want to talk about uh, the variety development. So again, before jumping our activity, I want to provide some background. So that's um, about the breeding about the breeding pro the breeding process. So and I'm, as I mentioned before, so breeding is kind of this three three stage cycle. So first, I want to I want to um, I want to uh, uh, look at the white breeding population together with you. So I want to highlight in 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 the in this white breeding population we have different stages. We have multiple years. So this is the major reason we have multiple years. We want to evaluate the material in multiple environment and then we can select the, the, the clones with stable performance. So then this hopefully this this material can hold up well in the future in farmers field. Stable performance is always very important. So um, so here it can show the breeding process. First we made crosses and we developed the variation, the segregation. And then we put the, the, the material in the seedling trial is only one plant and uh, we evaluate them uh, to select uh, mainly based on CMD resistance, based on plant type, a little bit based on root type. And then we, pl we put them in the single row trial and uh, select based on yield, uh, start content, plant architecture, CMD resistance. And uh, in the year four, it will be preliminary year trial, advanced year trial, uniform year trial, and then re re um, register the material. So you can see we evaluate the material in one, two, three, four, at least four or five years year trial. And even for several trial, we have different in different location. So that means the material go to the re registration stage and at least so we already evaluate them in kind at least six, seven or even more environment. 
So in this way, we hope we can find the material have stable performance, stable dry matter, stable yield. Um, then then can have um, stable um, uh, income or benefit for farmers. So for uh, the breeding team, not only manage one publication, so we manage um, several publications simultaneously. So here is kind of example. Um, in in 2021, we have seedlings, and in 2022, we make selection and plant a single row trial for the seedling, and then we start another publication. Um, so we have seedlings. And then in 2023, for the publication one, we are in the preliminary year, year trial. And for publication two, we are in the single row trial. And for publication three, we are in Sydney trial. So and on and on. So in 2025, we are going to but the breeding publishing will be managing all the different stages. OK. So this is the way the breeding breeding program Every year we might have the uh, in the future. Every year we might have the variety reach to the registration stage. So every year there might be possible, might be possibility the breeding program will release new new varieties. Okay, so and uh, and also I want I want to highlight now in this stage we select we select the best material come back to the crossing use as as parents. To put them in the in the course industry to develop the new publication. So here is kind of to show you. So this is the publishing we have, and then we select the best ones to put them in course industry. So we generate the next um, uh, breeding, the next generation of breeding publishing. So um, theoretically, the person will have better mean, the better publishing mean than the parental. Parental, parental generation. So this difference, this publishing mean difference, we call it improvement. Okay. So the, um, so this is the difference between one cycle and then after we have several cycles of improvement, we are going to have a larger gain, larger gain in, for example, in yield, in starch or in starch. Stability. I think here is mainly about to start yield again, right? So, um, uh, yeah. So year after year, for example, here if here is the TME before and nine, and then the next the next generation the uh, the generation one of CMD resistant, and then the next generation. So and on and on, which hopefully we can develop better and better variety to meet farmers' needs. Yeah, so here is uh, is show you the breeding scheme and also the time the timeline. So again, in two thousand twenty, we we um, after we identify the best uh, CMD resistant clones from the trials, and then we put them in cross industry. And then we two thousand twenty one, we plan the seeding trial, and we make selection based on CMD marker and also based on plant type. And then put them in single row, and now the material are in the preliminary year trial. Okay, so here uh, we validate in the in the process we validated the CMD two markers is performed very well. It um, uh, showed high correlation with uh, a field observation. So now we we rely on the CMD two marker to reduce the publication size uh, in early stage. And also we introduced the red light system in the cross industry. So hopefully we can we can have uh, uh, flowers available, especially for the erect plant type uh, varieties. OK, so um, now so here is the result of the single row trial we harvest in 2023 this year. So we have two locations you can see for CMD. We have good uh, repeatability plant architecture. Is also good. Uh, start content is good. It's consistent with we uh, what we observed, and uh, yield is relatively low. I think the major reason is in one location we have um, severe root rot. So I think that's my that's be one of the major reason.
for the low repeatability of these two these two locations. And uh, in early stage, we only have one replication, so we use uh, diagonal um, uh, um, augmented augmented design. Use checks in the diagonal. Okay, so um, these are the after we evaluate them in single row trial, we select the best ones, put them in the question history. So here is show you the progenitors we selected um, for their um, plant architecture. So here is mainly show the height of the first branch and the yield as the start content. So you can see um, in general, the plant, the plant architecture is not as good as um, um, and the release variety like K50 or TMU4 and 9. So there are some branches, okay? So the, again, so this is the, the first generation, but there are several clones. It showed uh, very good uh, plant, ag, plant architecture. And for yield, we can see there are several clones is uh, promising. It held much, much higher than the checks. And for start content, uh, so this is something um, we'll be concerned. This is high yield, but the geometry is not very high. It's kind of on the edge. So it's a little bit lower than the standard. Okay, so again, so we try to use, we use them as progenitors. We try to improve it. Hopefully it can bring some um, high yield trace to the breeding population also. Yeah, so you can see they are still a lot, several clones is not as good as the checks um, uh, in the in the in the start content, but for start yield, so all these selected clones have um, better performance than checks, especially than Q50. So again, now um, breeding publishing manage multiple publications. The breeding breeding team manage multiple breeding publications. So this year in 2023. So for publishing one, we have preliminary year trial. For publishing two, we have uh, um, single row trial. Publishing three, we have um, ceiling trial. So um, we already, I think, during our our field visiting, we are going to see all these um, all these trials. So we we saw ceiling trials in Hanoi, and uh, we saw we are we are going to see the the single row trials in Tiny and Dong Nai, and the preliminary year trial also in Tiny and uh, Dong Nai. So also based on the performance in single row trial, we select best ones, put them in cross industry. So now they are in in Lam Dong. We also are going to see see them in our cross in our cross industry during the field tour. So here is kind of show you um the breeding publications in Hong Lok Agriculture Research Center. So again, the breeding publishing manage, breeding breeding team manage several publications. So this is one publication, this is um another publication, this is the third third publication. So this publication is more advanced, is more advanced. We already uh the the best selected material are in the pre preliminary year trial. And these publishing are in the single row trial, and these publishing are in the seedling stage. Okay, so you can see every year Hanlock has about um, five or six thousand uh, um, genotypes to to start, and um, then based on the CMB marker, based on the plant architecture, reduce the popping size dramatically, and um, and then for the for the next uh, field evaluation. So um, I think here I want to talk about um, a little bit more about the tools we developed. So we developed we developed these tools. It's all we use the tools. It's mainly try to increase our breeding efficiency. So one one parameter or one parameter to evaluate the breeding efficiency is called genetic gain. So genetic again is uh, a lagging uh, per, um, indicator for the performance of the breeding team, so or the breeding program. So, but um, the gen the genetic again, um, there are uh, four major components can affect genetic again. So this is been um, 
reflecting in this uh, Breeder's equation uh, function. So on the left side, that's genetic gain, and on the right side are the four key element or four com key major components. So that's the useful genetic diversity, duration of the selection cycle, accuracy, and uh, intensity. So we, I think all our breeding effort or improvement are going to increase the useful genetic diversity, increase our accuracy, increase our intensity, and reduce the duration of selection cycle. Okay, so um, here are the activities we have been doing try to improve the efficiency of the breeding program at SEED. So you, using red color, I highlight the activities is mainly happened in Southeast Asia. So a flower, so we um, introduced the flower inducing technology, which was developed in the next gen project. And also we use um, Kasawa to manage the database, and we use data analysis, linear mix model, selection index, and we validate the marker. We use marker assistance selection. So um, for red light, for the flower inducing uh, technology, so we started with red light. So this is the result uh, from Columbia in Palmyra. Uh, again, Palmyra is um, 1,000 meter above the sea level. So this is where we have the crossing nursery. So in Vietnam, we also have the crossing nursery in the medium at altitude. So it's about 800 meter above the sea level. So, so this is the experience from the breeding breeders. So cassava flower um, better in the medium uh, altitude. So, and even after we, um, in, we extend the field period ex extension. Well, uh, we extended the field period and using red light, you can see we dramatically reduce the flowering time. So the blue line is natural light without red light, without field period ex extension. The orange, orange is the time, the flowering time um, under red light. So you can see for some clones is it can reduce the flower flowering time two months or three months, especially for this late flower material. So you can see on the natural light, this material require even six or seven months to flower. But on the red light, it can have flower within three or four, a little bit more than uh, about four months, right? So that dramatic, dramatically reduce the flowering time, and also we can have more flowers. So we now we manage all our data in Kassel base, and also we collected collected the data in the field using the the, the phone app is called Field uh, Field Book. So they, we try to minimize the handwriting in the field, and then to reduce the and uh, the handwriting error and also increase the, the data collection efficiency. So now we, we manage all the data in, in Kazaa base, all the data um, managed in the same format. So that helped us a lot in standardizing the data analysis pipeline. So we download the data, we run through the pipeline and then make them making selections. So about marker system selection, so um, uh, CMD, Marker was developed by ITA um, um, colleagues. So now we we have publications. We use the publishing in Vietnam to validate those markers. So here we use two publications. One publication is uh, um, the Vietnam local variety. So um, this is mainly the variety we collected from farmer field. We can call it the land race or some improved variety. In total, there are 142 clones. And uh, another publishing is Seat material. So uh, we know this publishing is from uh, um, the CMD, CMD2 donors. So this publishing there is CMD2 gene there. So we use these two publishing to validate uh, the CMD marker to see how the marker works in different background. 
So again, so here um, is I show you the result of the phenotype data collected from from the from it's mainly from Tainin. So you can see um, we have pretty good uh, uh, range of variation in the population, and we have um, pretty good heritability or repeatability in our field observations. Okay, so and then we after we get the, the market data, we group the population based on their genotype. So we can see the resistant allele. So once once uh, the groups with the resistant allele T and A, so it we can see it, it has dramatically lower CMD symptom. So this is the result in the C at 102 um, population. So uh, this population we know it has CMD2. So it's uh, it's um, it's work. So that means the the CMD marker works very well in the population which from the donor of CMD2 genes. Okay. And but however, in another publishing is more diverse publishing. This is the, the land race of the local local material collected from farmers' field. So the market does not work that as well as in the uh, segregation population. OK, so I think our conclusion is um, as long as we know about the treat donor in the breeding population, we can use the CMD marker to select the CMD res CMD2 resistant allele and then to select for the CMD resistance. But this marker might not work in the diversity um, population, so you are not able to use this marker to select, for example, gene back material to see which which accession have the CMD2 genes. So this marker is linked, is linked with CMD2 genes. For example, CMD2 genes is here. This marker is here. So the link can be breaked in some germplasm. So but in breeding publishing in general, so when 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 we made crosses, usually this link filled up pretty well. So in breeding publishing, this link is in general is is together. So we can use the marker to select. So if we have fewer allele, so we have the same two genes. If we don't have this, the the allele, there's also no same two genes, right? So, um, and uh, so here I want to also want to highlight another observation is in these um, Vietnam local varieties, we. You know, we evaluated their field performance, CMD resistance, um, CMD symptom, and also we have their genotype. So we identified several clones. It showed pretty low CMD score. It's less than two. You can see compare with uh, the susceptible checks, the local variety. Usually, in general, the susceptible variety showed three, three point five, even higher. But all these several clones uh, showed uh, relatively lower CMD score. They might have some tolerance. So we, we call it new CMD resistance. So this is something we are going to dig into to see whether we can identify some other um, new CMD resistance of CMD tolerance. So this is something we are doing in another project with the AGI. So but uh, yeah, you can see for this tolerance material, some clones have this T resistant allele, some clones don't have. So this is kind of give a, give us another another uh, evidence means um, this resistance might be something new. Um, so then I want to discuss several, uh, I, I mean, about the future development of Casal breeding. So here is um, it's mainly about uh, what we are doing at SEAT. It's not, uh, it's not um, um, only in Southeast Asia, it's mainly at SEAT, the Hill Casal breeding, breeding program, um, what our future direction. So we are thinking it's mainly uh, first uh, we implement the genome selection using the genome wide information to help us to make a better decision. 
and uh, we started uh, hybrid cassava breeding. It's mainly used inbred progenitor based hybrid breeding. So I'm, I have several slides to go to to show you some details. <clears throat> so first, it's uh, general section. And so on the left is the, the current uh, commissional recurrent selection breeding pipeline. So till the year five, we have um, confidence about our um, our evaluation of the performance of the clone. Then we select the best clone, put them back in the course industry, and to develop a new population. So this is one cycle. So one cycle it takes five years. So and now we if we can implement genome selection using the genome-wide marker, we train the model, and then we we can predict the performance of the early material, early stage material, and then select the material back to the cross industry. So this is only three year cycle. So you can see from five year to three year cycle, so we can dramatically increase our genetic gain. So uh, at, so since and the Seattle the Consult Breeding Program, we start from the scratch, so we don't have historical data, especially historical genotype data to train the germ section prediction model. So we start from the uh, from scratch. We build up the training population and then develop the prediction model. So our way is we use siblings to predict sibling now in the current stage. So um, that means we have a breeding population from across industry, and we select uh, the training population based on the pedigree. For example, we have 50 families, and then from these 50 families, we select uh, about 8 to 10 from each family and put them at the training population. But all the others, we put them in the breeding population evaluating in the field. All right, since the training population size is small, so we can do greenhouse pr propagation from one seedling, we can get five plants in the in the three to four months. And then we can uh, increase these uh, five plants. And um, then next year we are going to have the stem cuttings for multiple environment, multiple location, year trial to collect the high quality phenotype data. So we use this phenotype data to train the model. OK, so that means uh, in, in year one, we make crosses. In year two, we increase the stem. In year three, we train the model. And at the same time, we develop, uh, we train the model and we develop the model. And at the same time, for breeding population, we plant them as seedling in the field and uh, use the Field evaluation, we dramatically reduce the population size from 6,000 to 900. So this is the way we re reduce the population size to reduce the cost of the genotyping. So and then we bring the genotype data to the equation and predict the performance and then cycle back to the course industry. So this is what we are doing now. So <clears throat> so here I just uh, briefly show you how this um, breeding scheme works. So this is here to show you the predictive ability is basically is the um, we the correlation coefficient between the observed value and the predict value. So you, um, if we if we put up the observed value in the x axis and uh, predict value in the y axis. So that we have the scatter plot. So the correlation coefficient of this scatter plot is we call it predictability, it's shown here. So we you can see we saw pretty high predictability uh, for uh, start content or dry matter content. And we also observe good predictive predictability on plant architecture. So here is um, the height of the first branch and uh, the number of branches. And also we saw good predictability on thrips resistance. So this is why insect in cassava production. And we saw moderate, uh, um, uh, moderate uh, predictability on yield. So I think in general, the result is promising is uh, we observed the moderate and high predictability uh, in for different traits. 
Um, so here there are several trees that show the low predictability. I think the main reason is either there's um, um, no segregation in the, in the population or um, the heritability is very low for this for these trees. You can see, especially for for skin, we don't have a reliable screen method for for skin. It makes sense. Um, the heritability is, is low, and also the predictability is low. Okay. So the next, I want to briefly uh, talk about uh, hybrid cassava breeding. So, and uh, um, here I want to want to compare um, cassava with um, maize, which is the most uh, the one of the most successful um, crop which use heterosis. So we, if we compare cassava and maize, so both are starch crop and both are deployed. And uh, cassava is also cross-pollinated. Maize is also cross-pollinated. And we can sell cassava easily. So that we didn't see dramatic uh, self -incom incompatible. Um, and uh, ca both cassava and maize showed in brain depression. So this is another side of heterosis. So usually we believe if we observe in brain depression, so after we we have the inbred lines, we cross inbred line. We should recover the inbred depression using uh, uh, through um, heterosis. And uh, for cassava, it's clonal clonal propagate crop. So that means um, farmers don't need to purchase seeds from company, so they can keep um, the best material in their hand for at least three or four years. Um, so this is a given for cassava. We don't need a um, um, seed production si si system to match the hybrid breeding. So um, currently we are, this is our current current stage. If we have five product, uh, we use heterodagous progenitors. So we have to manage separated breeding population for each product. So if we have five, pro five product, at least we need five FTE to manage um, the breeding population. And um, so this is our target. So that's um, inbred progenitor based hybrid cassava breeding. So since we use inbred progenitor, we can use trait integration to integrate the traits and to the foundation population. So this is the foundation population. We are going to spend much more effort to improve the performance of this foundation population. And um, all the other products build on the top of this foundation population. So we use treat integration to, to integrate high beta carotene, low side integrate good queen quality, low side introduce waxy cassava, low, uh, waxy starch, low side. So, um, so in in this way, it in, in increase the efficiency in variety development, and also reduce the cost. So rather than using five FTE, so here we might be able to manage the five product using three or three point five FTE. So this is the cost cost benefit, and also using treat integration. We can easily introduce, in, integrate CMD resistance, CBSD resistance to the best varieties. So rather than spend uh, 10 years, the process, go through the whole process to release variety, we can use quick backcrossing to improve the current popular variety within three, two or three years. And then this will dramatically increase the impact of the breeding breeding team so rather than so you you can you can imagine how much gain the farmer will will have within this um, um this um for, uh, five or six years gap right so we use current we uh, scheme we we need seven or eight years if we can use backcrossing use using for hybrid cassava breeding. So we can integrate the trees only two or three years. So this within these four or five years, the farmer will 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 benefit from this um, 
treating integration lines or the, the integration improved clones. OK, so now we are work, we are team up with several uh, organizations try to study these four major topics in brain depression um, develop semi inbred progenitor or develop a double haploid and improve uh, the population using rapid cycling to uh, purge the, the genetic load and also to create uh, heterotic groups. So we started with a pilot project uh, using three progenitors. So this is one progenitor, this is another progenitor, this is the third progenitor. So we have uh, five publications. So this this is self-in publication, self-in publication, self-in publication, and two falsy uh, publication or falsy families. So we have these five family. We have um, the genome-wide markers. We evaluated the, this publication in two locations in the targeting environment. So now we use a social mapping try to see to identify the large effect, the loci affect uh, different traits. So here is kind of show the yield and the yield related traits. So we find in one family, family three, there is two loci on chromosome five, chromosome fifteen, is showed large, um, showed the sign significant signal um, yield or yield related traits. So that means seem like there there might be these two loci might be large effect deleterium mutations affect yield. So this we are going to once we are we are going to validate this loci and then to develop markers and then select against this loci in the breeding breeding practice. And I hope this will help us to uh, get better better selfing materials. Again, so um, this is our goals. Um, our our goal once we develop the hybrid cassava breeding. So first, we we are going to spend uh, much effort on this on this population, and we use treating treating regression um, to develop product for the other um, pipelines. And uh, so at least the two benefit here. So first, we reduce the cost of the breeding team, and second, we uh, use we can use backwards in treat integration that can quickly improve the performance of the elite material quickly ensure integrate CMD resistance CBSD resistance that will um, will uh, will deliver the improved variety at least for five years faster than the conventional way so that will make gain in farmers field. Um, so in terms of the future development in Southeast Asia, so here I highlight I highlight the three part. One part is about the germplasm. So um, the plant pathology team identified the pathogen for whisperum. I think the next step we are going to de develop the Asawa whisperum disease screen protocol, and then we are going to screen the breeding population the gym bag material, so <clears throat> hopefully we can find the resistance and then we can start um, integrating this um, um, resistance to breeding publishing. And also we are doing, we introduce um, CMD resistance material from Steve Winter's lab, and then we, <clears throat> we are going to um, um, integrate CBSD in our breeding publishing. So <clears throat> it will serve two purposes, one is per for MT for breeding for Southeast Asia, and also it will facilitate the germ plasm sharing um, to East Africa. Especially, we are going to share the the high and stable dry matter erect plant type material um, to Southeast Asia, to uh, East Africa easily. And once we have the CMD CBSD resistance, um, another way is um, um, another tree is important is rotor out. So Recently, we have we um, farmers all in cassava production region in Colombia in Southeast Asia. Uh, there are lot, there are a lot of rains, so it's caused some dramatic root rot problem. So this is something we need to work on that and um, 
to develop a way to screen and uh, hopefully we can improve um, the root rot tolerance in the released uh, material. We are going to continue to do capacity building. Um, it's not only about to uh, modernize the cassava breeding program at SEAT, also um, to improve uh, the breeding efficiency in national programs. So especially for our inducing technology to uh, um, include in pruning and uh, hormone, try to get more, more, more flowers and uh, to standardize uh, the data collection, especially the SOP for evaluation. Um, to manage uh, to train the national programs for data management and data analysis um, using genome information, especially the, uh, the genome selection. So we started uh, uh, collecting the data or uh, accumulate data to train the model using the material uh, managed by SEAT breeding team. So this is something we are going to demonstrate uh, the uh, efficiency of um, of jump section and then to introduce it to the national programs. So another important part is about decision making. So we need to um, structure the advancement meeting, um, especially in the late stage for variety release to using data driven decision making in the advancement meeting to really release the best material uh, which have stable performance in farmers field in the future. So and for our tools, we are going to continue to develop and implement the tools. Um, I mentioned the jump section. We are going to discover markers, link the marker for dry matter for plant uh, type, plant architecture. So hopefully um, in, in, in the future, we can use marker assistance selection also for dry matter content, uh, for starch content or for plant architecture. And uh, we started to doing some selfing in Vietnam. Uh, I believe in Thailand, there's um, the the breeder also um, have been doing selfing, try to develop the hybrid cassava breeding uh, breeding activity. So this is something probably we also are going to start in Vietnam to sell uh, some material and to be uh, to test uh, their combined ability and to be ready for the future hybrid cassava breeding. Uh, at, at the end, I want to uh, want to highlight uh, the activities uh, we are working um, on the CM, CMD and CBID resistance. We introduced the five uh, dual resistant material from Steve Winter Lab. So we plant them in the course industry this year, and um, I believe we should be able to uh, to get some flowers and then to cross this dual resistant material with the Elint uh, um, Southeast Asia. Um, Varieties and then to um, to select uh, both CMD and CBSD resistance. So this is um, this is the way um, we are thinking is um, not only for the preemptive breeding for South Asia is also try to contribute to the uh, cassava breeding of the cassava community in Africa. So there are three 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 ways we can share germplasm. So first, we cross the dual resistant material with uh, elint variety in, so in Southeast uh, Asia. So that means uh, this elint progenitor will have uh, erect plant type, high and stable dry matter, high yield. And then we can, after we harvest the seeds, we can share the seeds with Africa partners in East Africa. And also we can evaluate this uh, um, seeds, this progeny. Uh, in seedling trial, in single row trial, and then we select uh, uh, the best ones. So we, we can send these best ones to uh, Steve Winter's lab for evaluation to and then select um, um, after the evaluation, we can select the best the best clones with CBS resistance, CMD resistance and uh, the best agronomy per performance to Africa partners. And also we can cycle them back to cross with um, uh, elite progenitors again to to improve their performance. And then we can we can share the seeds from the second cycle, not this cycle, from the second cycle to Africa partners. So that means these will be more improved uh, 
So the, we, if we call generation zero, so this will be the uh, cycle one or, or, gen, or generation one is more improved um, population. So here are the three ways. So is the, the seeds from the cycle zero or the seeds from cycle one or the um, best uh, clones confirms done by Steve Winter and uh, confirms the agronomy per performance in Southeast Asia. So these three type of material we can we can share with Africa partners to uh, contribute to the CBSD resistance um, breeding in East Africa. All right, so um, a very long presentation. Um, I just um, really want to uh, want to try to explain breeding, try to explain how uh, the genetic gain and um, hope um, I provide enough information um, for you to understand uh, um, how breeding activity, how breeding pr practice work um, and is the Seattle Casal breeding program. Um, so here I really, um, this is um, not uh, the achievement of uh, the Seattle Casal breeding program. So I think we really benefit from the multidisciplinary team at Seattle. So uh, again, so this is a teamwork is um, the Seattle Casal program and also the collaboration with national programs. So also benefit from other projects like uh, Next Gen Project, uh, White Flag pro White Flag pro Project. Um, okay, so I will stop here. So thank you very much. Uh, looking forward to uh, the discussion in the in-person meeting there. Thank you very much.